Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today is the 79th anniversary of D-Day. While battleships were present to provide shore bombardment support during the D-Day invasions and for about two weeks after, Iowa-class battleships like New Jersey were not. They were in the Pacific and intended to be the older battleships that were off the coast of Normandy. One question that we get very frequently is, everybody's heard the story about Texas flooding her tanks to get more elevation out of her guns. Could Iowa-class battleships do that? Yes? End of video. See you guys next week. Now, the, the short answer is yes, Iowa-class battleships could flood their tanks to create a list um, which would then increase the elevation of the ship's guns. The real question, though, is would Iowa-class battleships have to do that? And for that, it's going to be a much longer answer. They always are with me, aren't they? So, about a week after D-Day, the Allied forces had pushed so far inland that they were about to outrange the battleship's guns. Texas, uh, along with a couple of other older battleships, were still there providing gunnery support. Gunnery support was still required, but the troops were moving past the range of their guns. Why was that? What, uh, what did Texas do about it? So the, the very famous story that everybody knows, which is accurate, is that Texas intentionally lists the tanks on the side opposite the shore to be able to elevate their guns further. This allowed them to fire further inland than designed to uh, provide that bombardment support that the ground troops needed. Why did Texas have to do this? In the 1920s and 30s, the older battleships that were being retained get modernized. One of the things that is modernized on some, but not all of them, is the elevation of the main battery guns. You see, when ships like Texas were first built, the guns had the capacity of firing 15, 20 miles easy. However, there was no way to plot fire control solutions that far away. Uh, spotting, range finders, computers, all that was, was relatively in its infancy. And the last time the U.S. Navy had gone to war with battleships, it had been spotting almost exclusively with the Mark I human eyeball. So, and this isn't just an American thing. Around the world, uh, there, there isn't really any technology that can help aim the guns that far away. So, the elevation of the guns is intentionally limited. To be able to make the guns elevate further means that you need a deeper pocket under the guns so that when they elevate and fire, that there's room for them to recoil. Well, that's eating up a lot of your internal volume in the turrets. The larger your turrets are, the larger the ship needs to be, and these things are already heavy, super expensive. You're trying to build a full fleet of them. So, Texas and many other battleships of her generation had their main battery guns elevation limited to about 15 degrees, 15 degrees in Texas's case, uh, around there for most other battleships being built at this time. During the interwar years, some American battleships, but not Texas, get their maximum elevation increased to 30 degrees. So, Texas's range was not limited by the size of her guns. In theory, a 14-inch gun could fire further than Texas's, it was limited by the fact that they were only elevating to about 15 degrees. The fire control computers and other equipment that Texas gets modernized with during this interwar period is the same sort of equipment that's being put on other American battleships, which have greater elevation capacities. So if Texas can find a way to elevate her guns a few degrees more, it will increase the range. And that's what they did. By putting just a two degree list on their guns, increasing the max elevation to 17 degrees, they were able to fire further inland. Could New Jersey do this? Yes. Did New Jersey need to? No. Our guns were designed from the start to be able to elevate to 45 degrees. This means that at 45 degrees, we are achieving the maximum possible range with our projectiles. Could uh, we counter flood? Yes. Would counterflooding to increase the list increase the range of the guns? No. If we increase the range to 47 degrees, that's roughly a similar 
uh, impact zone to if we had decreased the range to 43 degrees. So we would actually be losing range by doing that. Under what circumstances might an IO-class battleship want to do this? Well, if we start to take damage on one side of the ship and list towards the enemy, that's going to start restricting the main elevation of our guns. As the ship lists, the guns start to um, point closer to the enemy. They, they don't elevate high enough anymore. So, very common to counter flood your ship when that's happening to bring her back to as close to an even keel as possible. Not only does that simplify your fire control solution, but it also returns that potential range back to the main battery guns. Uh, and that's where we are right now. We're down on Broadway where a lot of the uh, valves and whatnot for the monitoring your levels of fluids in the tanks and uh, all that sort of information are located so that uh, if we start to see these levels fill up, feel the ship go over, hey, we might need to go to the tank on the other side and adjust that to counter flood. Was Texas the only battleship to ever do this? No, not at all. It was very common, especially in World War I British monitors, to counter flood like that to get more range out of their guns firing inland. When you're doing shore bombardment, you're not firing at a moving target most of the time, so it's much easier to list the ship, drop a shell, see where it's landing, and then adjust based off of that, as opposed to if you're in a naval battle, you really don't want to be messing around with, with your trim, uh, getting out of trim to increase your range. So, have you ever heard this story? Let us know in the comment section down below. Have you ever heard that there were more ships than just Texas that did it? Let us also know that. And have you ever been out to visit Texas? One last thing to let us know about down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.